edition of Cheers to Careers. I am Steve Ridinghouse, the career outreach coordinator at the School of Journalism and Mass Communications at KU. Hello, we are in Chicago today for the latest episode of Cheers to Careers. I'm joined today by KU alum Heather Hayden, the senior creative recruiter at Ogilvy. Welcome, Heather. Thank you. Good to be here. Go KU. Rock shock. <laughs> so you are the senior creative recruiter, so that sounds super specific, and we were just chatting. Um, you like to think outside the box when you're recruiting talent. So what is the key to recruiting and retaining talent at Ogilvy? You know, I think for me, talent, I, you know, because I kind of came into this um, in a different path. I started off on the account side, then went production side, and then became a creative recruiter. So I, I look at talent a different way. I'm really looking at for that raw, innate kind of talent. And from there, it's really looking for people that have a unique, interesting point of view. Um, people are good storytellers. People that are constantly curious and you can tell, like I had one CCO that always used to call it like keeping your antennas up, you know, that are out there looking for the connections in the world and, you know, problem solver, you know, I'll never forget Dr. Bangston back at KU, you know, one of the first things it's like, we are all problem solvers and it's so true. And no matter what area of the business you, um, you end up in, you have to be a creative problem solver and a creative champion, I believe. Um, and in terms of, you know, how Ogilvy has, you know, great reputation for retaining talent. There are people that have been here, which is not normal these days, you know, like 20 years, 10 years, you know, which is again, not the norm. Um, and I think there's one of the things I really love about Ogilvy is there's still a sense of humanity. There's a lot of you know, shops out there, digital shops that, you know, can, can kind of, uh, you know, really want to just, you know, kind of run people into the ground in terms of the work. And there is just a real respect for talent and the creative process, as well as, you know, the, the level of strategic thinking and ideas and the level of the ideas, which is just really cool to be around. And there's a lot of work we do also, um, for good, like using our skills for, for good versus just, you know, pushing product um, and really, you know, um, you know, things that can change policy, policy can change culture. Um, and that is something that is really um, is supported from the absolute top global down. Um, and it's just cool to be in a place like that, um, that Champs is at. And, and, you know, I love that you know, I, when I first started Ogilvy, I had my little David, you know, Ogilvy and advertising book in my bag. And, you know, like there, those principles are still true to the day, um, even with the emergence of technology and everything that's, you know, evolving our business. Um, and we still pride ourselves on those principles. Um, but, you know, it's all about evolving and thinking about things in a different way, but staying true to, you know, kind of what we know is um, what, you know, produces great work. So how are you using technology with the recruitment process? I, I know you mentioned some like social media, Instagram, is that becoming more? Yeah, important? you know, I think there's different ways, you know, like um, not necessarily at Ogilvy. I mean, I do obviously check social media is is big and in, in understanding that people can use that space because a lot of talent these days are digital natives or social natives. Um, but yeah, like I, at when I was at Havas Chicago, I built an internship program because that was one of those things where everybody's like, oh, interns, uh, you know, it's like, well, you know, if we find a creative way to, um, to recruit them as well as we support them, you know, while they're here, you can, there's going to be a lot of success out of that. And we end up, um, doing a, a recruitment draft that was all based on Instagram and, and um, the back and forth with people from our office and kind of getting a better sense. And that's the cool thing about, you know, these days, like when I first graduated, I, I had a, a piece of paper, a resume, you know, and now, you know, you, I really am looking for people that don't just tell me, they can show me because you can show me so much and you give me so much depth onto who you are. And, and what drives you. And, and that's what's the benefit of, you know, having an understanding and, and having that ability to, to kind of see people on social and see them as their real self, you know, in a way too. What was your recruitment process like 
at Olga because you've been there what about four and a half years or a little over four and a yeah. half. Yeah. So like I um honestly when I, I left my last agency, I was literally just gonna freelance around um and just kind of check out and see what's going on at some uh, some agencies and you know again uh just kind of fell in love with Ogilvy and just the 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 traditional sense that they are but still trying to evolve and you know and not you know be complacent um and again the the quality of work and the expectations in terms of the type of work is just really important because there's a lot of advertising out there and it's you know and there's just a type of work and a type of thinking and you know grounded in very strategic you know principles is 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 really you know, work that I want, you know, work that you can be proud of, you know? Um, so, so yeah. So when they wanted me to go full time, I was like, sure. And again, like I, you know, back when I was on the account side, I had been at great agencies, um, like J. Walter Thompson here in Chicago and another agency element 79 and which there was a real sense of collaboration and team and competitive, but like, healthy competitive and everybody kind of appreciated everybody no matter what level title whatever and there was a sense that Ogilvy has that same thing I mean there's people that are you know very you know very old and have been at Ogilvy for 40 years I mean Joe Sharota basically built the CCO here built the the office and you know there's appreciation there's no ageism because a lot of places like we just want a bunch of kids, but it's like, no, you can't have a bunch of kids and young talent. You need people that have been through it, can understand, but you know, everybody needs to have that inner child in themselves and constantly, you know, be curious about what is the new technology? How do we use it? Maybe I don't have to know every single thing about it, but you need to be curious and understand it and how it's used. Um, because I mean, that's, again, I think one of the, the key things that I, think you should have to be in this business is curiosity because you're constantly working on so many different things and you know like I and the council I start off on fishing equipment to oatmeal to Pepsi you know like you just never know what you can work on and having that ability to kind of jump in and out and and of different subject matters and and thrive on that I think is really important and that comes from just being a curious person. So are you doing a lot of celebrating this year? Is I think I saw it's like, what the 75th anniversary? 75th anniversary. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, uh we we celebrate, but we're always always about what's next and you know, we, you know, not kind of sitting on our laurels. Um, you know, we've had a lot of success in all the award shows, but I think we we have more to do. I think, you know, in the last several years, probably since like 2021. There was a big shakeup in leadership. And, you know, one of the things is, um, you know, we are doing work and solving problems for a diverse world out there. And so making sure that our leadership and our talent reflects that because and, and you know, for me, it it's just just kind of a duh for me because I feel like, you know, ideas and and creativity and thinking is only stronger when you get like-minded people in terms of values and work ethic, but you get, you bring people together from all different points of view, age, you know, religion, whatever it is. And that's where the magic happens. You need to have that friction. You need to have difference of opinion. You need to, you know, kind of um, have the yin and the yang in order to really achieve what you have. And so I feel like we've had some, we've put some key people in place within leadership um, and then that's trickled down into the rest of the staff. And I think, you know, we're, we're on a good trajectory in terms of, you know, continue to achieve goals and, um, you know, get some, some more big, big work out there, um, which is a goal of ours. Now, Heather, do you travel much with your work? Because I think what you have. What, um, you know, like, you know, <laughs> pre-pandemic, you know, I was going to, you know, was able to to go to more portfolios and to schools and what have you. But now with it being, um, you know, the ability to be just virtual, which is actually helpful, <laughs> um, shaking all those hands really made me come back sick on with colds all the time. But, um, but I love, you know, getting out and, and being at those schools and like, Hey, you, I need to get back there. Um, and just kind of be in the environment. Cause it just, it's, I'll never forget what it felt like to be in school and that like 
cool energy that you get of you know you're just there to learn and experience and um so it's fun just you know getting back but so yeah for the most part don't really I mean I we just combined or we kind of teamed up with our California offices which I've been helping build um so hoping to get out to LA again um because I've hired the team out there um and you know New York I still haven't been to that office um because of the pandemic but uh, but yeah, and then DC, what I you know, I, they always help me, or they always ask me to help them out. So I hope to get there. I I do, but it's really not um a ton of traveling, you know. So when you're recruiting talent, I mean, how much do you figure in? I think I read somewhere where you're a big believer in team building. So when you're recruiting talent, how much do you figure in? Like, hey, is this going to be a good fit for our team? Does that come into play? Absolutely, absolutely. I think there's a certain vibe that you kind of have to sense, and I think. Um, you know, and understand kind of the vibe of the team, the client, and and then knowing like where where's the missing link, and, and you know, understanding that, um, and bringing that in. I mean, think you don't want all same same, um, but you also just have certain guide guide rules of like you know who seems to work the best, you know, within Oakley because every you know every agency does the same stuff, but it's all different based on those people and how they roll, and so it's just understanding and. One of the things that's very important to me when I first got to Ogilvy is, you know, you know, being right in the creative department, the production department, and like, you know, putting my antennas up and absorbing kind of the vibe and the, you know, the the feel and just kind of getting a sense of like how they roll. And there's a lot of that that um, I just am naturally good at, which is is just fun and just kind of picking up on the on the the little things um, that can help you inform you to be smarter and better at your job. And how was that transition from like accounts to production to recruiting? Was that a pretty smooth transition, a natural transition? So, so when I first, um, so my basically, I I can go into my long story. So basically, I was in, I was inspired to to get into this business through my grandfather, who was like a French oil painter, and he was also a creative director in house at Sears Roebuck and Company back in the day of the famous catalog, which I call the original Amazon and art copy, and you know he took me to Pearl Art Center. I would, you know, we had an art room in my house and like creativity and like was always in my family's blood. And um, in, so I always knew I want to be in advertising. I never knew exactly where I fit and went to school, you know, at KU. And it was like, you're, are you a creative? Are you media? Are you account? And for me at the time, you know, back then in order i knew i had a created spirit and created but i'm in but at that time you had to go to portfolio school to eat and compete and i had to just start working and so i was like you know what i understand the creative brain i have a business side to me and um i'm going to be that account person that creatives really want to work with and helps champion and sell good work and so, you know, did that and I love, you know, appreciate the time on the account side because you learn about brand building, strategic thinking, you're a creative problem solver, you learn the entire, the big picture. Um, and it was really good at bringing people together. I think as you get higher and higher, sometimes it's less about the work and more about the client relationship, which is something I can do, but it's not something that I want to, you know, necessarily am passionate about. And so... Also at that time, I was like, oh, maybe I should go be a producer, but it was different. Again, there was no digital, no social, or it was just coming out. And so, you know, there weren't assistant producers, you know, production coordinators were any of that. Basically you had to like be a business manager or become like the head of productions executive assistant, you know? So I was like, you know what? I could take a break from agency life. And I also want to learn more about how it gets made and learn about the production side. So I left to um, go to the production side. I, I work for a small um, company that um, here in Chicago, where it's basically, and this again, this is before digital and social, where we were up and coming directors, we were selling them, like, hey, we, they don't have a reel, but you know, they can do the job. And it was like, honestly, the best way for me to start into that business versus you know working for a production company where 
the directors consult themselves. Um, and that I did that for a couple of years and that owner, he actually ended up closing the company and going to FCB and heading up production. I still wasn't ready to go on the, uh, back to the agency side. So I picked up, um, I worked for a music company that's out in LA. They were called Hum Music. Now they're Shindig. I was in house for them, but like, you know, kind of handled the Midwest territory. Um, and then the economy took a hit at one point, And then it was like, you know, even though they were, you know, a salary on that, music is always a smallest portion of a budget. So they were like, hey, you should probably pick up some other companies because we know you need to, um, you need to probably make more money. And so picked up director, more directors, motion graphics, um, tabletop. And then I just kind of, you know, kind of had that itch to get back to the agency side and use my strategic skills to feel like I'm part of something and building something and worked with an executive coach that happened to be, um, she was in the business because that was important to me and she happened to recruit in the business and really kind of re- um, grounded myself in my values and what what do I love about what I do and what gets me out of bed every day and really realize that I love identifying you know talent I love seeing something in somebody that maybe somebody else doesn't see I love you know connecting talent I love building teams and and so you know part of my my job on the the production side was literally to meet anybody and everybody and happen to meet the executive assistant of the CCO of Favash Chicago. He needed a creative recruiter. He, um, I met with him. He hired me a week later, and then I was there for three and a half years. And then it's a small independent agency. Um, about two, a uh, couple people from uh, DDB. Uh, Vinny Warren was a CCO. He was best known for Budweiser's "What's Up" campaign. Um, he was he was amazing person to work for. Like the most amazing brain. And then, like I said, I left that company after, you know, kind of, they wanted to get put on the map and win small age of the year, which we did. And, and then it was kind of time for me to kind of move on. And that's why I was going to freelance. And then that's how I got scooped up in Ogilvy. But yeah, unfortunately, you know, it was, it was a hard transition. It wasn't as easy as I feel like, at least here at Ogilvy, what I love about Ogilvy too, if you're a good talent and you are a hard worker and you just have another interest in another area of the business or even, you know, another location within, you know, the, our all our offices, they're very supportive of champion people. I mean, there's been a lot of, you know, Count people that have moved over to be copywriters, which never, I mean, to be honest, like that really wasn't the thing, you know, it wasn't very easy, you know, back when I first started in this business. So it's really, it's really great that people are more open-minded and they see talent is talent. And then if, and putting them in the right place is only going to hold on to that talent. And I think that's also probably a, a reason why people tend to stick around Ogilvy because they feel like they're supported. And Heather, I know you're originally from the Chicago area. What brought you to KU? Did you have, did you have any KU connections? Well, so you, honestly, when you grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, you know, it's either you're smart enough to go to Northwestern, you, you know, want to go to U of I, which um, sometimes feels like back to high school, or you go to like surrounding states and um, landed, you know, kind of found out about KU, had a friend that went there and older brothers and and also just honestly learned about the the journalism school and the ad program and, um, you know, and also like, you know, being, you know, out of the suburbs of the city, we're, we're used to, you know, coming down to the city and like knowing that Kansas City, which is, is smaller, but, you know, had that access was a cool thing. So, and, you know, it also felt like a school that because there's a lot of big schools where, you know, in order to find your way, you have to join a sorority fraternity where it felt like, you know, you could do that. You could not do that. And, and you could get along. I remember like, you know, visiting a friend and being at a bar and people were like, Hey, what's up, you know, and just felt like very open-minded and like people wanted to meet people and be different, you know, like it just felt like, um, like college, what college should be like, you know, of like, I don't know who you are, where you're from, but let's cool, let's chat, chat, you know, um, and you know, and just made some really amazing friends through them through through KU. And while at KU, I believe you were involved with the uh, University of Daily Kansas and the KU Ad Club. What was that experience like? Yes, so that was again another thing for you know, Dr. Bengston was like my my hero, my mentor, you know, back in the day, and he was like. 
one of the things he he shared as in our class as advice is like you know what go work for the Kansan go go know what it feels like to sell ad space cold call and I just again was in one of those. I'm just one of those people who I'm always like, what else can I do to learn experience? And so I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to apply and do that and sell ad space, which was just such a good experience. And just, you know, even having just empathy for that, you know, and like, that's what I always kind of enforce people. It's like, even if you're not going to do something, just try to understand it and understand what people in the, that role do. And so you can just be smarter about it. And then ad club, again, it was just like, what else can I do to show you know, and get involved and, and show how passionate I was and how much I knew I belonged in this business. And um, so, yeah. While you were in the ad club, did you get to take any big ad club trips? I know sometimes our students get to go to Chicago and Dallas and New York. No, we weren't. Unfortunately, I wasn't. It, um, I think we did actually go visit an agency in Kansas City, maybe Barkley. Um, um, but yeah, but no, no, no like big trips, though. And when you graduated from KU, did you know exactly what you wanted to do or did that take some time to sort through? No. Well, yeah. I mean, so again, um, I was set on, I, I needed to get a job. So I was set on account management. I'm going to be account manager. And so again, Dr. Bankston was my mentor and he was like, Heather, just, you know, find out who, you know, find out who is working on account management in Chicago that are KU alums. And so I literally, you know, Got my, you know, got sat in the library with the red books because, you know, that's what you had to do. There was no website and and, and literally wrote down the names of every single KU alum that worked in account management in Chicago. And I wrote letters to every single one of those people saying, I will follow up with a call on such and such date and such and such time because I want, I'm going to be home soon and I would love to buy you a cup of coffee and just pick your brain. And, you know, it it was a lot of work and, you know, I don't even know what, it didn't get me my actual job that came through another, you know, networking, but like just doing that is important. I feel like that hard work, whether in some time, some ways it felt like it, it didn't do something. I think it did. It's just, you know, kind of doing the work, doing, you know, you know, working so hard at something. Cause like, you know, one of the things I always say, you know, a lot of people ask like, you know, about this business, how to get into this business. And I say, if you truly want to be in this business and you believe you will, it's not a matter of if, it's how and when. Um, because a lot of this business is about stars aligning. And so you have to just keep at it and be persistent and be patient and um, and just go, keep going for it and keep meeting people and keep just learning because that's, that's how it all works and there's always going to be an aspect of kind of who you know in this business um because it's just human nature for people to you know look at the to the people that they trust you know and the people that they trust and who they refer um so so yeah no great advice um we'll make sure our students are aware of that advice um and also, hey, next time you're on campus, yeah, feel free to drop by. Um, we yes. we'll set up an information booth, just give us a heads up. And Heather, I appreciate your time. Uh, I know sure. I always like to close with a little cheers <laughs> to our alums. And, uh, yeah, I know you got, like, cheers. And I, and I have my you little. <laughs> yeah. Now, is that from your graduation or what's that from? Yeah, it's, uh, I didn't actually go to the graduation because I was working, but um, okay. it's, it got sent to me, you know, and I think my, my, um, yeah got sent to me <laughs> <laughs> again heather i appreciate it and uh, cheers yeah cheers to you thanks so much for you know asking me to do this um yeah ku was really really integral into my career and i you know i i admire it and i'm you know um i just hope the best and wish the best for you know everybody that goes there and so yeah all right thanks heather i appreciate it thanks